Howdy. Um, I am Rachel, teacher, healer, and mystic. Um, and today I am doing my channeled message for the month. Um, normally I think I do healing on this Friday, but I felt like doing a channeled message. So that's what you've got. Um, so um, the way that I work is I, um, there's not a lot of pomp and circumstance, which is, is me to a T. Um, Cause I'm, I would like to think I'm quite grounded and down to earth um, because there is no real mystery to channeling, um, despite what some people would like to make you think. Most of us channel most of the time. Um, and so the way that I channel is very straightforward. All of my readings are channeled. If you get a reading through me, it's channeled. Occasionally you'll know when I look directly at you that um, you'll be getting a, um, a bit of personal advice rather than a bit of... Um, they come from my gut, if that makes sense, rather than all like mentorship, coaching, that type of stuff, maybe an exercise. The rest of the time I'm looking and staring elsewhere because it's channeled. So most of us channel most of the time. Um, it's something actually we were discussing last night in um, my Thursday evening online group that I run with Nikki, which is Real World Spirituality. We were discussing the higher self um, and how we were all, you know, kind of aspects of each other, which is which was a fun conversation. So um, we all channel most of the time. Um, it's just unconsciously asking a, a, a divine being, a higher being to come in and to give me a message that I can give to you, which is going to be relevant for the moment, which is going to be on point for whoever's watching, whoever's going to watch this and catch up. Um, it's going to help most of our people, um, which is inspirational, um, which makes us think differently. And I always know that it's channeled because it, I, I don't talk this well normally and it's different language to mine. And, um, you know, half the time the stuff that's kind of right, I'm like, whoa, that's that's amazing stuff. That's amazing stuff. So that's how I channel. That's what you get off me. And that's a little bit about channeling. Um, so what I will do is I'll have a little search around um, energetically and see who. Oh, somebody on my right hand side um, with a very firm, warm hand on my side. You always know that it's a higher being because they provide heat. Um, when spirit pass up to the sort of fourth, fifth dimension, which most spirit pass to at least the fourth, maybe the fifth dimension, um, we exist in those realms as well. We exist, always have existed in at least the fourth dimension. Um, they sometimes come through as cult because they're taking energy from the air around it in order to, to kind of manifest. Higher beings exist in the plane of love um, and um, they take the energy from, from love. So they tend to give rather than take energy. So my right arm is really warm. Oh, and it feels fairy. That's nice. Okay, I've got no idea still who I've got with me. Okay, let me tune into it a little bit better. Okay, so who I have with me is, um, oh, uh, uh, um, masculine um, energy. I think it might be one of the Egyptian gods. Um, it's definitely male it feels he feels young like he feels um i work with sekma a lot and she has got this kind of i don't want to say matriarchal energy because it's not quite right she's got a sort of empress goddess um strength to her um and this feels like i'm hanging out with my younger brother um and um he's definitely got fluffy hands um and I think that it's um, another lion-headed god, but he's a younger god. He feels, um, yeah, okay, that's right, because the heat in my arm has gone up like massively as the connection's forging in a much stronger way. Okay, he's just grinning, um, which is nice because I'm being filled with all of that love and all of that wonderful, um, like, joyous energy. He's got a kind of, um, I always feels like, finally having a proper chat with you is how it feels. Um, he's lovely, okay. What has this brother God got to, got to tell me? I've come to you because I need to talk to you, that, that always helps. I've been wondering for a long time why and how um, we interact and now I see that you do this. So this is wonderful. I can quite clearly feel him staring at the screen. Um, and this is interesting and I will look into this more, this more. Um, but for now, I want to tell you this, um, you have come to me because we are siblings and we know each other from old. And the time when 
you understood me was a time which doesn't exist anymore. Um, space has moved on. You are in a different part of the universe. Sometimes I come here and listen to what you say and what you do, and I like it, but there is something missing. This feels like a really personal message for me. So um, if anyone can take any wisdom for this, I'd be really happy as well. Um, there is something missing. That thing is that you haven't been able to, oh God, it's two or three words as one. Help, oh gosh, help aspects. Help as many aspects as you would like. These aspects are other parts of your soul and you have come here to raise them up and to bring them back to me and to our parents. When we are all gathered up, we will be unstoppable, but you need to find more. You need to find hundreds and thousands more. You need to find more. There are more of you out there that you need to gather up and bring to me. And when we are all complete, then we will rule the world. And he's laughing. Um, ruling is a strange concept, isn't it? For no one really rules. We only ever have guardianship. And that guardianship denotes and means and makes sense only in, in certain ways. And the certain way that it makes sense is that we are one and we are whole and we are complete. And when we are complete, He's just given me this feeling of um, makes me want to cry. It just it just feels amazing. Um, it doesn't feel lonely, and I don't know how to express that it's the opposite of loneliness. When we are complete, there is wholeness, and within that whole, there is the one, and within that one, there is you, and you are you, and I am you. And when we come together like this, what we remember is that um, we were never separated, um, we, that we have always been together. And when we remember that we have always been together and that we have always been one, we remember that it is easy to love. And that is what ruling is. Ruling is giving easily. Ruling is loving easily. Ruling is holding on fiercely even when it hurts and letting go sometimes. When we let go, we enable. When we hold on, we restrict. And a great leader knows when to do those two things. Your planet does not remember how to do this. It only thinks it knows. There is much to learn and much to do, but most of this can be solved simply by being, simply by interacting and simply by calling forth your loved ones and holding them tight and close and never letting them go, not restricting, loving, never letting the love go. Once you have walked away a thousand times, then you will come back. And when you come back, there is only love. Wholeness comes from that sense of being and belonging. And at the moment, you're not quite there yet, my love. We will be one day when we are whole the universe will seem like a better place because it is. It is better for you being in it. It is better for you being here. Everyone, it is better for you being here. Never think anything less. You are the ones that bring the divine spark. You are the ones who are connected. You are the ones who know yourselves to be true. And in those moments of fear, when you rationalize the worst, those are the moments when you are your most honest and true. And there is nothing left on the table but rawness and emptiness. And when you express yourself as such, others will see it and know that it resonates with them and it resonates with their pain. And their pain will bring them to you. And your pain will bring them to them and everything is complete. Pain is what binds you. Pain is a double-edged sword. It, will, it is what allows you to feel. 
It is what allows you to remember that you are severed from the whole. That is what the pain is. The pain is being severed from each other, being severed from the wholeness and being set adrift. The pain is not knowing, not understanding. The pain is reaching into the ether and trying to pluck wisdom when it feels like there is none, when there is only darkness and black. Pain is searching around for the answers. And if you knew just to reach out and hold each other, the answers would be found simply through talking and holding and loving and being there for each other. How often do you not reach out when you are supposed to? How often do you not talk when you need to? How often do you push others aside? Just because it's the easier option. We get caught up in our own minds so much that we forget that there is outsideness. And that outsideness is where the strength is. The strength comes from the whole. Weakness comes from being set adrift. And call the others in and call them forth and call them to you now. Because, my child, they are the ones who seek the truth. Truth seekers, all ye be. Truth seekers, all in one. Truth seekers from the end and from the beginning and everywhere in between. There has never been more than you than there are now. So listen and listen wisely and listen with intent and listen with your heart, listen with your mind. Listen to all. This is the time for you to gather up and draw together and draw strength in communion, draw strength in one another. Stop balancing the world on your shoulders. Stop holding pain in your heart. Pain is shared and quartered and quadrupled and infinitesimal. I can't say the word that's in my head. Infinitesimal. Let's try this. The word is infinite, but a longer version of it. It is endless. It is endless because you do not draw the others close. Draw the others close. Let them hear your roar. Let them hear your call. Stand atop the mountain and speak your truth. Pain draws others together. And when they come to support and to love, they will heal your call. Call others to you now. You're alone in wisdom, but you are great in community. Never be the wise one, always be the I can't quite get the word, always it's not a it's not a word I know. You have to give me a different word. He's given me this sense of never be the wise one, always be the the one at the bottom, the peasant, the pauper, the the lower, the community, the Never seek to better yourself, seek to be one of the people, is how it feels. Self-betterment is not what you seek. Self-involvement, self-involvement is the truth. Never be alone again. And that is all I have to say. I have to Google his details and find out his name. He is pretty cool. Still very much stood there. My arm is still very hot. Um, but that was that was a really cool message. Um, I've been thinking a lot recently about um, loneliness. Um, and sometimes when um, those of us who are healers, and I do tend to work with a lot of other empaths, natural healers, practicing healers, um, we tend to be independent and we tend to struggle to reach out to each other when, when we need to. Um, and I think there's also that great danger with empaths where we've been hurt, then we cut ourselves off. And I certainly went through a stage in my 20s um, of, of stepping back from friendship. So you've been friendly, um, but not really allowing anyone close because um, that was um, 
don't want to say too painful, but it was it, that wasn't the conscious thought. The thought was actually it's kind of safer and I need to take my time. Um, so when we're independent, we tend not to lean on each other and we tend not to look to each other for help because we're so used to helping other people. And I think sometimes you have that thing thrown at you, well, you know, you're being stubborn or you're being too independent. And it's not a conscious thought. It's a way of being. It's a way of being which, because we remember oneness, others would have automatically turned to each other and known when we were in pain or known when we were upset um, and reach out to each other to help. And um, you know, our lives weren't ridiculously busy <laughs> with all this crap that we've invented. Um, so we had time to reach out to each other and to remember to reach out to each other. Um, and when you're an empath or a natural healer or, or a sensitive person, um, there's a part of you which still expects others to do that. And they, they can't. They, they can't. Even we don't know half the time when we're reaching out. Sometimes we might get an intuition. And, and quite often we don't. Um, so it's about making sure that we always reach out to each other um, and that when we're in pain, we talk about being in pain. Um, you know, it is an issue for me, having been a teacher for a long time, that many of my circles of friends end up um, coming to me via my work. And there's always that pressure that I end up putting on myself um, to, to, to still not sit in that, but that, that's the vibration that the relationship's been forged on. And it's, it's sometimes difficult to um, show, show myself. Um, most people will probably see me, but if it's difficult on these online things, but when there's groups and people are face to face and you know everyone's having a laugh and a giggle, that's what I love the most. Um, and it does this stuff does get lonely because there's not very many people who get things and the way that teaching has changed and moved on, that there's a lot of older teachers who aren't who haven't moved forward or didn't move forward, and that's fine. Um, and they're stuck in some very Victorian and Christian based ideologies in this country anyway about spirituality, which makes it really difficult, um, especially when, you know, a lot of my philosophies and a lot of my understandings come from the East or come from metaphysical stuff. And it's it's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, so we end up just being these islands. Um, and it's it then makes it really difficult to kind of have open genuine friendships where people check in on each other just because you want to see how somebody is um and then what happens is that people end up filling those spaces sometimes and it's not the right people to fill that space because there might be people whose boundaries aren't great and who want um a lot from someone in my position because they don't really understand how much effort and energy and sacrifice of personal energy goes into doing this stuff. Um, you know, these talents might be natural, but it doesn't mean that energy doesn't go into them and practice doesn't go into them. And it doesn't mean that they're not exhausting. Um, so you sometimes get people who want to fill in those spaces of friendships who, and they're not right. They're not the right people to fill those spaces. Um, so it's really interesting what he said to me earlier about calling others in um, and he said that to a lot of people um, that's not just for me that's a lot of people um, calling in different parts of the soul in order to make it whole um, something that I was showing quite a while ago was that it's it's about kind of creating this um, I don't want to say mini version of heaven because the Elysium that we seek Nirvana that we seek isn't doesn't exist in heaven it exists here only it exists here, honey. This physical experience, which is overwhelming at times and amazing, um, only exists, heaven only exists within these physical realms. Um, so, you know, humanity has been working towards building a, a real physical Elysium. It's not something that exists on the other side. On the other side, there's no physicality. You can't taste stuff. You can't feel the sun in your face. Um, you can't um, hear laughter in the same way. Um, you can't hold a baby, all of that amazing stuff. You know, you can't sit with the cat in your lap or the dog next to you and, and tickle it and, and all of that stuff. That all of those those amazing things are missing. So we're looking to build Elysium here. 
Um, and it's there's like patterns of groups, and those groups are the same patterns that are repeated. Um, there isn't as many higher selves or original selves as we think there is. Um, and the more that we kind of gather the wholeness of, of a group, and the more that group comes together, we can rebuild that Elysium because we, you know, we're, we're different parts where we're remembering um, what's going on. I don't know if that makes any sense, but there's an original group of original sort of parts of the universe, which are the original selves, and everything comes off them. And we're all kind of all living these multiple lives at the same time from these same souls. And if you can get more of a complete group together of these original souls, of parts of these original souls who kind of recognize each other, not necessarily just on a spiritual level, but also on a um, in all different walks of life. So you might be somebody who, um, you know, lives a life which is, yeah, I go to work every day, I do my work, it's a job, I, my job's fine, but my life is my family and my friends and all of that stuff. Um, you know, there might be an afterlife. It's, it's not, that's not the point. The my point in my life is my friends and my family. So, you know, all of those groups, are, those repeated patterns of souls are coming together. The more we can gather those repeated patterns of souls in together, the better. Um, and a lot of people bringing through some of the higher energy and the people who are healers are really bad at reaching out to each other in order to really cement and solidify these groups of souls and we've got to start drawing each other in and being honest about um, how difficult it is doing this work or how difficult it is um, you know um, trying to help each other or trying to teach each other or trying to guide each other in whatever ways it is that we do it um, we're the ones who are slacking behind um, like you know like he's talking about don't try and elevate yourself when you elevate yourself it ends up removing yourself from everybody else so trying to create these these soul groups which is what they effectively are um, and we're the ones slacking behind because we're not reaching out to each other enough um, interesting interesting um, so yeah we've got to get on my backside and gear about um, you know making sure that people reach out to me I suppose as well so I need to think about how I'm going to do that um, because yeah that's the thing isn't it that's the thing. Um, loneliness and all of that stuff affects all of us. Kerry, he said, I have a soul yearning for together with same cells. Yeah, like everyone get together and do some physical stuff and not everything being online. And it makes it really, like everything's been really difficult for the last couple of years. And I think part of that is to remind um, though us who maybe struggle <laughs> like on the empath vibration that we can sit back you go that 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 i haven't had that in my life and i feel really good but that that and that yeah i want i want those i want those people um it's to remind us of how important those physical connections are so we need to get our backsides in gear and start seeing each other more and reaching out to each other more and checking in on each other more and um talking about when we're in a shit space more um because like he just said to me, like elevating yourself isn't isn't helping um, with any of that stuff. Thank you. Right, I'm going to Google his name. I'll put it up in the comments later. Um, I'm just going to see if there's anyone else around. Oh, okay. There is. Um, I've got like a little um, fairy energy. Um, it looks completely made up. Did anybody used to watch the Wuzzles and, and all of those like shows which were about two or three animals mixed together? That's what it looks like. It looks like this like cute like baby, but it's a bear. It's a baby which is a bear, which is really quite fat and round and like just really fat and cute and just like floating in midair. Um, there's no wings. It's a really amazing like lime orange color. It's really cool and sweet and cute and really inquisitive. It's definitely an elemental because of um, how it's interacting and it feels like a flame. So I think it's a fire elemental of some sort, which is interesting, really interesting. Um, okay, he's pressed my nose like a button and it just feels very childlike, very childlike. I'm turning you on. Okay, he's talking about almost like a toy, I'm turning you on. It's very sweet and cute. Um, there is much that you don't know about life and there's much that you do. When we come together, what we know about each other is less true. 
Um, when we are apart, we are reminded of what we have missed. When you have missed something, you are supposed to grab it and pick it up and hug it and hold it and kiss it and run around with it and play games. And you don't. <laughs> you struggle to shake hands and struggle to smile and are awkward and don't quite know what to do. These are people you know. Remember them. Remember yourself and remember them at the same time. Remember who you are. Be you. Don't stand on inauthenticity. Don't stand on ceremony. Be you. Be with your friends. It's as easy as that. Remember there is nothingness. Remember all of those things. Remember that everything exists and nothing exists at all. And when you remember that, everything is easy. When you get your head caught up in the nonsense, that's when it becomes hard. Everything is real and nothing is important, and that's okay. What's the worst that can happen? Like that. What's the worst that can happen? Really, what's the worst that can happen? You will all, all be fine. Everyone will be fine. You just need to remember that you love each other. And this is time for change. This is a time for change. And when you remember that you love each other and that it is time for change, it is that easy. There is nothing else. There is nothing more. I have came to say hello and goodbye. And that is the end. Switch me off again. Um, yeah, Kerry, love the wazzles. It's the, the most bizarre creature I've ever seen. Is it the most bizarre creature I've ever seen? I once had a very lucid dream where I was walking around my old house and I walked into my daughter's bedroom. And she was in there in dream state playing with fairies, which were things like like cats, which were fairies with wings and like all these amazing creatures. And she was like, she's like seven now, but she was like at the time she was really little. She's like, come and play, mommy, come and play. And I'd had a really awful, very lucid dream. And um, I completely forgot it. That interaction, I completely forgot. Um, you know what I mean by lucid? Like you're walking around, you can feel the carpet under your feet. Um, and the, the, the heat of the radiator and all of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, that was a really cool little being who is just kind of like wondered. Is, there's like a bumblebee energy to him as well. Like I've got no idea what he is. There is like this bumblebee stripes on him that I've just noticed around the back. Um, he's really cute and really cool. Um, but just like this lime green, like flame of a little creature bobbling about um, with a big fat belly and fur and just really cute um and it's that constant reminder isn't it that if we live life like we're, we're children that we just expect stuff to happen and just expect goodness to come and just expect to meet friends and just expect um meals to happen and food to come um which is like we were designed to live that's you know we're hunter gatherers we, we were designed just to come across food we were designed to find a tree to sleep in and make a nest um you know with our family and all cuddle up and, and all of that stuff that's what we were designed to do and children um work to our design very very well um so just a reminder that the more that we can be like children that we the more we remember that wuzzles exist um the easier life will be um and just to step into that every so often. If you don't step into that two or three times a day, you're more than welcome to borrow one of my kids to do it with, because they will remind you. Um, my daughter went to the hospital the other day um, for some eye issues, nothing big. And um, she made four friends while we were there, like four proper friends um, that she had a really good time with and really enjoyed herself. Like most people are like, oh God, the hospital, no, no. Like a three year old can make the hospital like the most amazing time um and it's that energy isn't it remember that the hospital is a place full of opportunity for friendship and joy um and and magic and mystery um and all of that stuff like i was really worried <laughs> she did amazingly um so yeah the children are the way right i'm gonna go i'm gonna make a move i think i've been about a half hour or so so um if you're watching this on catch up please feel free to pop any thoughts comments anything like that and i'll um, get back to you um, I always like getting back to you guys. Um, if you want to book in for readings, healing, all of that stuff you can do. If you're thinking about 
buying like a really cool present for somebody that's actually going to genuinely help them. Um, I do have gift cards available on the site. Um, so, you know, oh, thank you, Kerry. Um, so, you know, it might be that you don't fancy it for yourself, but actually you want to give somebody something really awesome. Um, that's actually going to make a difference to their life, unlike, I don't know, a salad bowl. We need salad bowls. Um, so, yeah, the sun's shining today, at least it is here. So get out and enjoy yourself if you can. Um, feel that connection into nature. Remember that you're a child. Reach out to your friends and arrange a coffee date. Um, all of that lovely stuff. And I will catch up with you guys soon.